What? They found out that P is equal to NP? Do you know what this means? Now we can quickly find a cure for cancer and have more accurate financial forecasts. But wait, shoot, this also means that many of our current security systems will be easily hacked. What? You are kidding? Come on! To be in P or to not be in P, that is the question. The question of P versus NP is one of the most important questions facing mathematicians currently, as the answer will decide the scope of our computational powers. Let me explain the question. There are two sets of problems, P and NP. P stands for polynomial time. Which means that the amount of time it takes to find the solution to the problem can be expressed as a polynomial time function of the size of the problem, such as n squared or n to the fifth. Basically, the solutions are fast. P includes basic math operations, sorting, and finding primes. Then there's NP, which stands for non-deterministic polynomial time. Which means that we have not yet found a polynomial time algorithm for the problem, but if you give me a possible solution, we can verify whether or not it's correct rather quickly. Everything in NP cannot be solved quickly, but can be verified quickly. And everything in P can be solved and verified quickly. In this sense, everything in P is in NP. We don't currently have the computational power to solve large Sudoku quickly, but we can verify possible solutions in polynomial time, so it's an NP. If we were to find an algorithm that could solve large Sudoku in polynomial time, then Sudoku would be in P. But that gives rise right to the question, is everything in NP in P? In other words, is P equal to NP? The problem is we can't know for sure, because it might just be that we haven't found the right algorithms for the problems in NP. Think of it this way, we used to think that the world was flat, but it turned out that this was false. Similarly, we might just not know enough to answer P versus NP. So, why does it matter so much? Well, it is one of the Clay Mathematics Institute's seven millennium problems, considered the most difficult problems in mathematics, each of which has a million dollar prize. Secondly, if P is equal to NP, then many doors will be open in the field of mathematics and science. For example, I mentioned earlier that if P is equal to NP, we can find a cure for cancer. This is because the problem of protein folding is in NP. If we can find a polynomial time algorithm that can fold proteins quickly, then we can attack cancer cells by building proteins that kill off the cancerous cells and leave the normal cells unaffected. However, there are some downsides of P is equal to NP. If P is equal to NP, then most of the world's security systems will be easily hacked, as most of them are based off the fact that factoring is in NP. If P is equal to NP, then the large numbers used by the algorithms could be easily found, and encryption and security would fall apart at their seams. What if P does not equal NP? Well, that would just mean that humanity's computing powers will be capped at around the level that they're at right now, and there will be many problems that we would just not be able to solve with a polynomial time algorithm. To P or not to P, I do have to be.